Okay, here we go. We're live, but I'm going to take a sip of caffeine before we get started. I need it. Ah. All right. Good evening, everyone. I know it's just going out. Yeah, okay. There we go. Uh, give it a few minutes, but uh, there we go. Okay, now we're going. Start sharing it. Uh, we're going to give it a few minutes for some people to come on, but uh, as promised, oh, there we go. As promised, our old friend, not that old, but old as far as how long have we known him. How old are you, Dan? Can I ask you that? Yeah, 47. Get out of here. 47. Are you serious? Yeah. I thought you were like 42-ish, 43-ish. I, I use oil of Olay, you know, I mean, that helps. You got that young, that young kid face. My, whole, my mom looks like she could be my sister, you know, like. We have uh we have young genes in our family, I guess. Good for you. So do I. Yeah. You can't tell from the beard and stuff, but it's under there. It's not that, gray, you know. Well, it's not gray. Well, but we well, can't tell if it is. So. Well, we won't get into that. <laughs> anyway, Dan, Dan, how do you say your last name? I always put your class. Name in. Class. class. Like I do say it right. Somebody else yeah. said it a different way, and I'm like, like they said. Yeah, like, I place. hear it all different ways. I just answered everything now. <laughs> So Dan is the owner of the Hinsdale House, which um, has been in the spotlight in the paranormal world for a good while now. But it keeps coming back to the forefront when you have people like Project Fear, who were just that episode aired on Friday. I think two part, right? They had a two parter. Two parter. Yeah. And both with giant fanfare, you know. I mean, half a million people watched that episode so far. I mean, so it's really... Yeah, and it's building. So let's go back to the beginning. We had Dan on many, many moons ago on our cable access show. Yeah. And, uh, he was just, just a young guy. He was only 40-ish about... 40-ish. Yeah, back then. But uh, we went to the... Dan's always been great about inviting people to the Hinsdale House and opening it up to everyone and letting all paranormal investigators. We didn't know about it. Dan wanted to come to the expo. So I said, hey, Dan, come to the expo, but let us come to your place. That's when Paranormal Lockdown yes. aired the exactly. episode. Dan said, come out whenever you want. We'll work it out. Of course, we picked the winter. God knows why. We went to upstate New York in the winter, but never do that again. But we went out there. Dan was very gracious, opened up the building, let us in. We were there most of the night. And that's how I met Dan. You know, really, for the we talked before, but we came to the power unity. But then I learned about Hinsdale kind of after going to Hinsdale. I knew what I knew from Paranormal Lockdown, and then going there, I kind of went into it a little more. But I know you've told this story a million times, but talk about the background of the property first before how you became involved and became the owner, if you don't mind. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's notoriously known back all the way dating to the 1970s. Uh, a family that moved in there, uh, the Dandy family, uh, started having poltergeist activity. You know, uh, their daughters getting scratched. Um, in, they were seeing creatures on the outside of the house that they couldn't explain. Shadow figures, um, ghosts, this full full body apparitions, and uh, it lasted about four years. They called in a a priest from St. Bonaventure, which is a local college. Ed and Lorraine Warren came out at one point when they were speaking up there. Um, they uh, continued to do, they did a mass there one time and then it got to the point where it wasn't getting cleared. Uh, so they uh, got an okay to do a structural exorcism or a, like a cleansing of the location. Uh, there was a psychic there, Alex Tanis, who was very famous back then, uh, the father, the family and the film crew from New York City and they performed this, this structural exorcism on the location, uh, they said the whole house shook and uh, was cleared within a few seconds. Uh, the, the film crew said it sounded like something was screaming on the outside of the house, and then uh, it was cleared. Uh, but then it came back full force, and uh, the priest, as cool as he was, I, you know, if I was going to have to take a class by a priest, this priest would have been the priest I would have wanted to. He was all into the occult. This is like oh, pre wow. You know, he had... He was all up in all different types of religions. He he seemed like a really cool guy. And all the recordings that I've uh, heard of him, he's uh, just seems like he's a butt ahead of his time. Uh, but he couldn't help did, him anymore. 
Do you know how he became involved? Did Ed and Lorraine get him involved, or did the family find him? The family found him uh, okay. because that's they that was their you know local somebody said we know a priest up here okay. that's into all this type of stuff, and that's how he got involved with it. And then he got Ed and Lorraine involved because he was involved with more than one of their projects that they were doing. So okay. You know, here's the thing, too. This is going way, I'm, you know, I'm going to go off on tangents here. Just from paranormal perspective, we're going to kind of analyze things. You said 1970 was when the dandies lived there, yes. right? Mm -hmm. Now, I imagine the property was occupied prior to 1970. Yeah, we have it dated back to 1853 when the house was built. So I've, over the years of doing this, and you're a paranormal investigator as well. You've been doing this a long time. You, you develop this kind of theory when you hear about places like Conjuring House, Amityville, if if it's real, who knows what Amityville or, uh, but some of these other places where there was no activity or no reported activity, but then there's boom, the the most extreme activity. Do you think that the land is sort of, uh, uh, I don't know, like a time bomb or something? Or do you think that the energy of the people in the building can trigger the extreme stuff i i feel like it's the land uh now since i've owned it in all these years and all the updates i've had we've been able to find people that have lived there before the dandy family that had things happening to them okay. as well okay um it, some some crazy stories you know like they were it, it's ta it was taboo back then everything was demonic you know so you don't want to talk about stuff like that um but we we do have stories uh prior to the dandy family of things happening um, I, there, I, we just a couple of years ago, um, we interviewed this this girl, this daughter of a, of a, of a guy that lived there when he was a young kid. <coughs> and I put it on. We made an episode of Behind the Shadows and put it up on my YouTube and stuff. But it was it was cool just to be able to hear his story. He talked about um, going going out on a snowmobile, you know, and uh, thought the ice on the pond was frozen. So this had to be right around sixty nine. And then uh, drove the, the snowmobile out under the pond and it cracked through. So he went and got his uncle and they pulled it out. And when he turned around, he saw what looked like a family levitating over the ice oh uh, with God. no legs, you know, like crazy, you know. And, and so there's a, a thing that he's kind of held in, held in all this time and hasn't talked about it until, you know, you know, we got this interview with him and his, and his daughter. His daughter is the one that reached out to us because she saw it in the news. And he's like, I used to live there. And then she started asking him questions and she got in contact with us. So the more it got out there, the more people were coming forward um, to, to speak to. So you're still, even after all this time, you're still piecing oh, yeah. more and more stories. Uh, and just for people who have never been to Hinsdale, can you kind of explain where it's located? Because it's pretty isolated. In the middle of nowhere. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's in the southern tier of New York State. Uh, they call it the Enchanted Mountains. Um, the best way that I can explain it is is if you're just traveling through the forest with, on a dirt road. <laughs> uh, since since you guys have been here, they've actually paved the road up to the yeah, hill, which is really nice. Um, the, you're just driving up in the, in the middle of the mountain. You see a little dirt road. You take a right, and then you just keep going, and then there's this house just sitting there in the middle of nowhere. I mean, you're just uh, – the, the closest neighbor is probably five, 600 yards away, you know, like pretty pretty far. So um, it's it's the country. And it's isolated. It's in the middle of nowhere. And but there's a feeling to it. You oh, yeah. You definitely feel it when you drive up there. Well, yeah. It's, I, like a, it's perfect for investigating. Oh, you know, my like, God. Yeah. The contamination. There's no yeah, outside yeah, contamination. Exactly. We were, um, I, I was going back. I, I tried to watch as much of the Project Fear video as I could, uh, the first part. And they went over the history of the house, of course, initially. I don't remember when when we were talking and when your book came out your book is what's the title of your book again hinsdale house and american haunting and that's available amazon and yeah everywhere on my okay. website i can send signed copies i don't recall in the book because it's been so long since i've read the book but i don't know if i recall the ten thousand native american massacre so you know that that's a that's a, a story uh there was a, a massacre in the town of hinsdale not you know they, they might have got that a little off but it, it's still there and there's still you know we found native american uh folklore or not american for american native american uh spearheads in the ground when we were digging the septic system uh the the native american burial grounds on the neighboring property are there so there's definitely a native american uh feel to the the whole property 
Uh, as far as like the, the 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 battle that they had uh, when the town of Hinsdale was burned down, they say in the stories that I've read, uh, up to ten thousand Native Americans have passed away in that in that fight you know, that they were fighting for the land, you know, back then. So, I mean, but it makes sense. Hinsdale, I mean, it's it's within the vicinity, you know. Right. Well, John Zappis has this theory, and you know, John, I know John. Oh, yeah. John believes that spirit attracts spirit. He, he, he always says to me, if there's spirit in one location, other spirits may gravitate to that location. Even if they don't remain there, they'll, they'll come through. When you get that kind of thing, like it's almost like Gettysburg, honestly, where right. all those deaths are in one town and you have that big open area behind. See, we didn't even investigate the outside when we went there, but it was freezing. I wanted to. But a lot of people are saying they are experiencing as much or more out there than they are in the house. How, you you never really talk about that. What what types of things have you experienced out there when you're investigating? So we have things that I, I mean, we've seen full body apparitions up by the pond. Really? Amazing, amazing EVPs out by where the hanging tree used to be. Uh, amazing spirit box sessions. Uh, we've captured full body apparition of a woman in white, a Native American in a full headdress in the driveway. Wow. Um, shadow figures on the outside of the house, um, elemental type of stuff happening in the forest. Uh, we've, uh, are you got, you know, Jeff Fent, uh, yeah. I always talk very highly to him. He, he's, he comes out to the house a lot and he's captured an, an amazing picture. Like he, he's like, I'm going to sleep in the forest. I go, you're effing crazy. <laughs> I'm not Never. sleeping, but he, Never. he was out there all night and he was using different light spectrums, taking pictures every time he heard something and he oh, captured wow. this creature up in the tree like 10 foot up in the tree using red light and nobody knows what it is i've only been told it's a puck wedgie by a shaman uh everybody i've showed the picture to uh, it's just creepy it looks like a cartoon i, I just don't <laughs> i don't know you know it makes sense being a puck wedgie it's a native american folklore uh, where they protect native american burial grounds so that could very well make sense um but i don't know there's been two teams that have also captured pictures of this thing in broad daylight now that, that people are familiar, know that it's out there, people are focusing and taking pictures into the forest and stuff. And they're, they've captured similar pictures of what wow. Jeff caught in, in the daylight, which wow. is crazy. People are asking, always feel like something's, something's watching you back there. You know, like some people, if you kept any of the wood from the hanging tree, do you have any of that wood? Yeah, the, I have a piece. Uh, Wildwood Sanitarium has a piece on display as well. Yeah, so there's still some over there if, some, if anybody wanted to snag it. You gotta make Jeff Snag make it. a box out of that. That'd it's so, what about it's, the where he found the bullet in the wood that you just sent him? Yeah, yeah, that. So we were uh, renovating the bathroom. Um, the toilet was leaking and the bathtub was leaking. So we actually pulled the bathtub out, put new flooring in, new uh, new uh, boards underneath it all. It was it was a big project, you know, because we had to. It, it, we could stick our finger through some of the boards. It was so bad from the from the rot. Um, some of the wood that was still good, I, I cut it and then I gave it to Jeff because I'm like, do, you know, do what you want with it. See, see what you're going to do. And he's, uh, he's made boxes for other people out of Hinsdale wood. Um, but when he cut into that, he's like, holy, holy, you know, sheet, you know, like, oh, holy, what do we got here? You know, like, and this would have been something I would have probably tossed because it was yeah. attached to, uh, and, and, and the thing is, is like even the slap board that I had behind the wall, you know, the little thin strips of wood, I had all that in the fire pit. And Jeff's like, I'm going to take some of that. Do you mind? I'm like, no, go ahead. And he made me the, oh, the it looks like a ghost. He made me the best spirit box with That's that. Cool. And it That's looks really so cool. So unique. And uh, yeah, I mean, he's he's amazing um, with, with his craft and what he does. And, you know, just to find that and then we got it dated, it was pre-revolutionary war because the first thing that come to mind is the folklore stories of the gentlemen that own the house and then are killing and murdering people. And I'm like, is that a bullet from them that they have people <laughs> lodged into the wood? But I mean, in reality, that was lodged into a tree that was harvested to build the house, but it's still cool as hell. You know? Oof. And again, you, cool. where did it come from? How did it get in there? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that, right. That whole thing. I was talking to John earlier when when we said we we're going to do this interview, and we we're talking about the house. In the beginning, when you came in, didn't you basically rescue the house from being demolished? I did. Yeah, uh, it was in really bad shape, and uh, the team that was uh, work trying to trying to save the location before me were friends of mine, and. Uh, it got to the, the the guy that owned it was from Calgary, Alberta, and uh, they 
all he was doing is just taking the money. You know, they had to keep sending the money and they were running it for free, trying to do all these fixings on it, trying to do the impossible. And they just got burned out. And it was it got to the point where they they had to throw their hands up. And I, I, I went and got their blessing because, you know, I I had a personal experience there and I didn't want to see the place gone. You know, it's uh, um, it was an amazing thing. Um, so what was that that happened? Again, talk about how you became even aware of. Yeah, I mean, I, I didn't when I went to the house the first time, I didn't even know the backstory. Right. Uh, the co-founder of my group, he said, you know, I got this location. I'll, I'll brief you guys all when I get there. And normally that was my job. I was the responsible one of the group and um, always took care of like paying everybody and whatnot. But he is he's I, I'm going to give you all the give you all the information when you get there. Here's the address. Don't look anything up on it. So we didn't, you know, it's uh, and that's not normally how I roll. And uh, he, we got into the house, and the first thing he did is had us sit in the living room, the only room in the house that had electricity at the time. They had curtains up and space heaters on, and the house was below zero. There's flies buzzing around. I'm like, what am I getting myself into here? <laughs> There's the kitchen ceilings collapsing. There's black mold. It was gross. I mean, it was it was really bad. And um, we we sat in the living room and watched the episode of A Haunting, A Dark what? Forest. Yeah, it's a dark. It's called the Dark Forest. It's based on the story of the house. The Dandy family, Clara's in it. Her son Michael's in it, who's passed away, and uh, they they tell a kind of a abbreviated version of the of the house, you know. And then I looked at him and I said, "I'm not in. I'm not in the house. It's in the show. You know. I, clearly, you're not." And he's like, "Yeah, cool." I'm like, "No." You know, like in my mind, I'm like, oh, my God, there was a failed exorcism here. And I'm sitting in this house and I didn't mentally come prepared. And I had to, like, walk outside and kind of ground myself. And and the thing that stood out, though, that night, it wasn't like, you no know, like demons all over the place. It was right. I felt like every piece of equipment that we had, the, the energies in the house knew how to manipulate it and make it go off. And I just felt like there was a they needed to be able to speak and tell their story. Um, and I just kept researching the location after that. It was kind of like uh, not not as bad as like Gollum in the Ring, but I mean, it was you know, <laughs> it was it was a cool place that I, I like to go to. You know, we right. go out and have a campfire in the backyard and investigate. And um, it was it was kind of magical in a way that we were the, the evidence that we were getting was just really good. Um, it got to the point where uh, they were going to shut the place down, like the, the guy that owned it. He's like, nobody's going to buy this place. I'm going to tear it down. They started ripping all the duct work out, electrical. And we were basically there saying goodbye. We were filming it. Tim Shaw was with us. And uh, uh, I was in the kitchen. And at that point, I had started doing more research. And I found this older couple that lived there in the 80s for uh, quite a bit, uh, the, the, the Misnicks. And uh, we were in the kitchen. And it was just three of us in there. And they were talking about the exorcism. And the Danny. nothing nothing was happening. I had a K2 meter in my hand. I get chills thinking about it because it's like, this is why I saved the house. And I said, Flo, are you here? This was the older lady. And I got goosebumps up my arm, you know, just chills. And the K2 meter went all the way to 500 milligals. And um, I continued to have what I felt like was a conversation with her. Um, I said, Flo, uh, will you hold my hand as we go up the stairs? And I've never had anything like this ever happen again. And I wa started walking up the stairs slowly. And the K2 meter stayed lit in my hand all the way up the stairs. Now there's no electricity, nothing, no right. reason to make this go off. And when I got into the master bedroom, it was still lit. Like she was holding my hand. I could feel like energy all around me. And then when I crossed over into Mary's room, which is the room that they feel like the portal was in, where all the flies were in the window, um, I lost her. Um, the, next, the next morning, I posted a picture on Facebook of the Hinsdale house. And I said, this is where I investigated last night. And I got a message from a lady named Jackie Chandra. And she goes, that looks like my grandparents' old house. And I said, well, who are your grandparents? And she said, Flo and Joe Misnick. And I, the synchronicities of all of that, like her her seeing the picture on my Facebook page, um, I knew that it was like something was telling me I needed to kind of see if I could save this place. And uh, everything fell into place. You know, like it was, it, it's a big whim, you know, because it, it had a teardown date. It was ready to be torn down. <laughs> Well, what about family? Uh, we talk, I think we talked about this before. You're married. You I am. Children. Yeah. Um, what was the thought when you said to your wife, hey, I'm buying this. Yeah, I, had a spirit home. Oh, I didn't, I didn't say it like that. <laughs> um, I didn't is say, she, honey, I'm buying into this. Is the paranormal? She is. Um, okay. she's, she's probably my biggest supporter. You know, okay. she does come out to some stuff. It, 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 the kids were all younger, but she supported me 
in what I was doing um, to the point where I could go out and do all this stuff. Because without her, I wouldn't be able to do anything that I've done. Uh, I I owe a big big portion of everything that I've achieved in this world to her. And uh, she's an awesome lady, awesome mom, and uh, I love her to death. But she, uh, I, I remember <laughs> um, going coming to talk to her because we had just bought a, our house. We had just bought a our family home, you know, a bigger house, you know, almost 2,500 square foot house. And she, we didn't have much money left because we had to put a giant deposit down. And, and I, I went to her, talk to her and I said, honey, I want to talk to you about this income property down in the Southern tier. And she goes, Oh, are you serious right now? We just bought a house. I'm like, and I, I explained it to her and, and I, it, we were laughing because every time I said something, she's like, are you, what? Because I know oh, it needs it needs new siding, it needs a new roof. There's leaking. There's black mold. He wants to buy there. the money pit. Five hundred thousand honeybees living in the floorboards. You know, you name it. It needs to be done in this place. You know, like it's just the shell. And and uh, I explained to her why I wanted it, why I wanted to save it, and she supported me. She supported the idea. She let me drain basically drain our bank account, plus some to to put the deposit down to save it i had then i had to go down and talk to the guy that owned it um and explain to him you know because no bank would would you know put a loan on this place because of the way it is you know the way that the house was had to be all cash and uh he believed in my vision he says many people like you have tried this he goes what makes you think you're going to succeed and i said i don't know i goes but i have a good feeling about it and um uh, you know he he agreed to put electricity back to the house to the to the to the to the main wires and we had to put all the new breakers in and rewire it and Oof. it was a uh, one step after another and then I, re I remember before he, i even went to sign the contract i drove up to the house and the grass was like four feet tall the door was wide open oh my God. and i'm like what the f am i doing <laughs> like, what am i doing here this is crazy isn't it bizarre though how like like you said is there any coincidences like was the universe did that make it happen you know what i mean all those things that needed to fall in place that for that sense. place not to be knocked down and just forgotten. i know you talk about connections with spirits and you were asking about you know spirits getting you know attracting spirits or or is a is a location or a house reactory towards the people living there but the spirit i think picked dan that's what a lot of people say like this it it, it picked me you know and Maybe it knew I was up to the up to the job. I don't know, but it what it, it picked me. But I think I had the house is is as weird as it sounds. It has a way of rallying people behind it. It right. does. You know, it's not not yeah. I'm a spokesperson for the location, but any team that's come there, um, you know, you, you go to cons, you go to different places, you see people wearing Hinsdale house shirts. You see people are, are walking billboards for this place, and I don't even have, I don't even have to sell it. All right, let, let's talk about Rosa Nile. Rosa Nile is like Rosa, one of your biggest fans. Yeah, no, yeah, she's she's she, amazing. Yeah, she she started. Uh, you know, she just she. I met her on Periscope. You guys remember Periscope? Oh, and I used to I used to run live feeds on Periscope, and I was actually making bank on there before they shut it down. It was good. Wow, it was it was doing really well. Um, but um, yeah, she was one of my followers on there, and then uh, she was very interested in the location, and I remember. She was one of the first ones. She like donated like a hundred dollars to me to get a camera to put in, you know, so Aww. she could watch watch live feeds. And she's been a supporter, a uh, great supporter of the location ever since. She comes a couple times a year. She um, spends time there. She's coming again at the end of April. Um, she just she has a love for it just as much as I do. Well, what, what's interesting if you're in this field, you know that um, there's a lot of places that are known within the field. Some are not so well known. Um, Hinsdale, from the time you took it over and started really letting groups come in and research, and I'm sure you've seen every kind of group do every kind of method and everything under the sun in that building, which is kind of cool because is. there is there there's a lot of different methods and a lot of different beliefs and a lot of different people, and you get to see firsthand or hear about well, what did you do? What your technique? How did you do? And then implement that maybe yourself and try to get more in the diary of everything which is that happens. Really interesting. But being on paranormal lockdown, you've had so many people come out there. Nick Roth reached out to you right back in the early days. Yeah. And 
did he research the property as well and say, hey, there's this little gem over here in Hinsdale? Oh, it was, it was on his list of places to go. And it's funny, we talk about it today. And he, it wasn't on the original list of places to go. They had a cancellation. Oh. And it just happened to be, you know, just a uh, just Another coincidence. Out. Yeah. And not, he feels connected to the location. You know, he's been re helping to research the location all these years. He hasn't gone away. You know, he's true to his word. And uh, it, it's, you know, he can't. I remember when his cousin first called me because I, I get so many people that try to get free nights, you know, like let, let's. Like us. You know, yeah, sure, sure. <laughs> I, don't, I, I honestly like my whole my whole like the thing about this. This is like if you can't afford it, talk to me on the side. You know, like it's not it's not about the money all the time. I think what goes around comes around. Um, I just wanted good people that knew what they were doing in there, investigating. You know, and trying to come up with uh, puzzle pieces to this place. So I, I, it's been like that for me ever since I bought it. I've never turned <laughs> somebody away. That, uh, that that was good you know i i don't think yeah, but that's such a great attitude that you have because um again you didn't even hesitate with us you were like pick a date these are the dates that are open you want to come out come out and i was just like wow well, this is different as yeah, to you how you, have, have you ever come across you know, you don't have to name names or anything have you ever come across someone in here there who did something that you didn't really like or kind of approve of no, I pretty much am, I allow people to be themselves. Okay. Um, I don't uh, discourage people from trying things. I just don't want people to antagonize uh, the energies that are there. If you okay. if, there's a, if there's a technique that you want to try, you know, uh, people are taboo with Ouija boards, and I I have Ouija boards there for people to use. So I mean, okay. Um, yeah, I mean, I just my personal belief is I feel like there are another way of communication. I've had people that have tried to play like music. You know, try to connect with spirits that way. I've had um, people that have used blood, you know, which I think is kind of weird. Wow. Yeah, um, but we'll I, that. that's, that's on them. I've had Wiccans there. I've had Buddhists there. I've had all different types of uh, spiritual backgrounds that have, that have come in and kind of do their own thing. And it's cool to watch, you know, because it's what you and I may look at uh, doing an investigation, um, doing some of the stuff that they do, it, it, you know, maybe that may garner some results. Maybe there's energies that aren't dealing with uh, Christianity, you know, maybe they're, uh, well, especially maybe, if you're dealing with, maybe if there's Indian spirits around there. Yeah. Yeah. People so don't, but, but people don't, that, that's what, again, you and I, we've talked about paranormal before and I, and I appreciate people who don't, live in a box you know and think so far out to where anything there like you said methods there's all different methods of spirit communication and, experimentation, and there is no right yeah. there is no wrong we experiment we try we see different things in different places because not every place this technique will work or that technique spirits are different they have different beliefs just like we do different backgrounds like we do different there, there's just different people and and i like that you're kind of open to that but I know the reputation of Hinsdale, especially again, watching, I'm watching Project Fear and it's all oppression and there's things here and we have to be careful. And uh, yeah. what are your thoughts on all of that? Do you really, do, do you think you do have to be careful? Can those energies jump up at you? And I've had it happen to me. Um, I've had, uh, there's definitely like a negative uh, energy in there. Uh, it's it's come out at me in the past. Uh, in not, what way? In what way? Could you uh, give I, I would just say like you get the so if you're say say you're there for a few hours and you're investigating and you have like uh, you're getting positive communication, good EVPs, you know, K two meters going, your equipment's working, and then all of a sudden you just feel like suppressed, heavy, and then all of a sudden you're getting like swear words coming through, like and telling you to leave, and you know it's like it it it, it acts like that. You know, sometimes I've had um, I've had a second exorcism in the in the location. Really, somebody somebody, somebody had gotten taken over. Uh, the the best that I can explain is that his eyes turned all black. Holy uh, he crap. was up, upstairs uh, in the closet area, and a priest from Niagara Falls came and did an exorcism exorcism on him. I had to, I wasn't there, uh, but I oh. went went to Niagara Falls and interviewed the priest and got everything that that happened and his side of the story and what he did. And, you know, so this was, this was an investigator that came to the location quite often and, and 
became kind of infatuated with the location. That's why I kind of keep my distance from it too, in a way. Like I, I have a, a, a lot of great help. Tiffany's in the, I know I saw Tiffany in the chat room. She's, she actually lives in the Hinsdale. She's one of, one of my neighbors. She lives down okay. the road and she's uh talks about stuff that has happened down where she lives. And uh, she helped. She's, she's amazing help. She comes up to the house and she can let people in. They all, they're all trained. They all know the stories. And uh, we want to try to get the information out as, as, as up to date as we can. Wow. You know, wow. 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 Again, part of that Project Fear video, and, and again, you and I think a lot alike when it comes to, I listen to your the way you talk and the things you say. You said to them, which again, I kind of preach this myself, if you're in an area, you're in a spot, and you feel that feeling, like you said, like you feel like your mind is whatever, drifting, right. or you feel like you're getting angry, get yourself out of that spot. Just remove yourself from it. And take a little breather and don't focus on leave, something else for a yeah, while. Don't leave yourself entrenched in that space and that doing those things because I've had that happen to me and I don't know about you. Yeah. Where that's why you, I tell people that. <laughs> yeah, you get caught up in and that you don't realize it's happening until you know things start happening to he you. He picked it on um, he picked up a Ouija board that, that an artist painted on the back of it. And it was cut on the edges and he was told it was dark and he pushes the envelope where when you tell me something's dark, I'm gone. <laughs> and he literally, have video John's it. licking it. <laughs> he, literally <laughs> it. he literally got so nasty and foul. It was, it was brutal. Yeah. I mean, I had to tell him after like, it was like everybody, because it was live, everybody saw the moment that <clears throat> everything changed with him. It was like that and so not typical. Yeah, I mean, it's happened to a few people. I mean, we've had people that have sent me pictures of scratch marks that they've gotten at the house. Um, but for the most part, you know, like I've tried to reverse that feeling, right. you know, like right. I've been bringing, you know, like opening the light, you know, re redoing the house, bringing love and light to the location and positiveness. And I, I feel like it's it's ten times different than when I first bought it. It's it seems like an open book now with the, with the energies that are there. And I don't get too many stories about dark stuff right. as I do. You know, maybe this is a past resident, or maybe I spoke to this person, or that. People are starting to know the name. Some of the names that are recurring over and over again um, are coming out more and more often. So, you know, uh, maybe just the the energy that you put into something is what you're going to get back too. Um, someone said, goes, I saw the dog upstairs. What's the deal with oh, the, the dog? dog? Yeah. So, I mean, we've captured a picture of a dog in, uh, in, the, in the kitchen, like cool. a full blown apparition of a dog. <laughs> dog? Uh, we've got, yeah, we've gotten EVPs of, of a cat. We, you know, Richard oh, East, East up was there with his group and he's, he's writing a book on the house and he, uh, um, he has an awesome EVP of a cat meowing. <laughs> That's just nuts. Yeah. So, but Clara, when she lived there, she loves animals. She had a pet raccoon. She had dogs. Uh, I one of the past residents of the location uh, after the dandies left talked about her dog. Um, how it was? I forget if it was a oh, it was a Labrador. So those are really dogs that are really loyal. They stay stay by your side. They don't, you know, you call them, they come. She said one day this dog was sitting on the chair. It just jumped out of the chair, ran out the door, and ran right in front of a truck. Going down oh, the road. Oh my God! Yeah. So I'll, could it be the spirit of that dog? I don't know. Like, uh, but she said Ugh. it was very unlike, very unlike the dog to do something like that. There's, there's a, there's people that lived there after the Dandy family that once they uh, moved in, they, the one family they had to like do an estate sale because they just left everything. And after a month, they left, left all their stuff there. They didn't want to go back in that house. They, it's crazy. See stuff like that. Again, that's the stuff that really gets you because there, there's no reason to do that. If you wanted to make a, like there was a case in Jersey where um, this family moved out without notifying their, their landlord and they, they said the place was haunted and they left their stuff there and, you know, came out that they had financial trouble and blah, blah, blah. And it could have been something other than the haunting. But if you're leaving stuff behind, odds yeah. are you want out of there for a reason like and you can't be there anymore you know and that's right. i've been in places that uh, and again it's the luxury we have as investigators is we don't live usually in the buildings that are we're, we're dealing with we're not there every day every minute every hour dealing with whatever 
the people are dealing with. Yeah, when you're but I want to go back to the history of the house because, again, I, I, I had forgotten and I watched Project Fear and I'm watching them go through all this. Um, the people that build it, what were their last names again? Everett. And they were two, were they brothers? Were they family? There were two brothers. Um, so the, it's, the folklore story is that right. there were two brothers that built the house and then they were they would lure people in from the stagecoach trail um kill murder rape steal their goods bury their bodies out on the outside you know and that we didn't know about the the everett's brothers because i had the history wrong um and there was a researcher out of erie pennsylvania that worked for the newspaper that was able to correct my timeline and uh, when she did that we were able to date the house back to when it was originally built now the, the research that i've done on these guys one is built uh, in Davenport, Iowa, buried in Davenport, Iowa. One's built, uh, uh, buried in Hinsdale. I mean, they were metal workers. You know, they, and nothing, nothing that I've read or seen on them would impl imply that they were murderers. I mean, but, you know, folklore is folklore. See, see, but that's a little, a little truth to every story that's, you just don't know, you know, but I don't want to, I don't, I don't, I never say I want to pin them as murderers, you know? Right, right. And that's a good point because, again, when, being in the field and you watch, I've been to many places where they say, you know, the story is this, the folklore is this. And, you know, if you, without the documented proof of that, it's really hard to say that this is factual. These guys were arrested and convicted for doing these, but right. back then there were different times anyway. It wasn't like, well, there's somebody know, serial somebody's... killers out in the woods could get away with whatever the hell they wanted to and never. Somebody made the statement caught. that it's that uh, there's always some truth to every story. Right, right. Uh, Perhaps. Do you do you believe one of the again the theories from Project Fear and during that episode, the land being a vortex or a portal that. Is that possible? Do you think, or do you I, think that? I, I mean, a lot. Of, I when I talk to them off camera, that a lot of what I spoke to about was that because I'm I'm looking at like ley lines. I'm looking at like that. There's a there's two like the 45th parallel, and I forget. What, I have it all written down, but they crisscross right where the pond is. Okay. You know, like, and one of them is perpendicular with a power plant in Pittsburgh. Like, I don't know. I don't know if there's any synchronicities with any of that type of stuff. But you know, if this stuff is used. Uh, possibly it could be. I mean, there's an underground aquifer that feeds the pond, fresh water. Um, mm -hmm. And we've been able to actually use um, different lighting to actually see where it's coming from. We found the aquifer up on the hill where it starts. And now we have like a tunnel uh, and we use backhoe and we dig this giant tunnel. It's like a sewer now where the water's going through this. So it doesn't sat uh, saturate the whole property. And we were actually able to make the property back to the way it was in the 70s before the pond was built because um, that was turning it all into like a swamp because it was all like clogged up. But, yeah, I mean, I think it could definitely be some type of a lot of energy there, you know, like with the rocks and the stuff that we found. Um, when we started. So when we talk about when we talk about um, and this is just me, just curiosity sake, we're all <coughs> talking about portals and stuff. We're we really basically talking about maybe there's like a surge of a type of energy that makes it possible for something to come through. Is that what we're talking about? Yeah, about all about? the elements being there to sustain. Yeah, why and, why are they so <clears throat> um, capable of communicating in the way that they do audibly? You right. know, like um, where where is the energy coming from? Yeah. But, you know, like, is it, is it, are they drawing from the land and the property? Does the house just happen to be plopped on top of, on top of all of this and experiencing all of this? I mean, that's, it's a theory that I have. I mean, because it's, it's not only paranormal, it's, you know, there's cryptids, there's uh, people come up there to do that. There's elemental people. I mean, I've had teams that specialize in that, that have come up. I have some amazing pictures of things I can't explain wow. um, that, that look like could be like a fairy or something. I have no idea. You know, this is not stuff that I ever did, yeah. um, uh, but, you know, it's UFOs. I mean, I've seen some stuff up there <laughs> that oh I can't explain. Um, <laughs> and and, and in, in Clara's book in the 1970s, she wrote Echoes of a Haunting, and it's kind of like a diary of her family's life living in this house, which I do have copies for uh, available on my on my website. But she talks about uh, being upstairs in the bed and then the lights just coming down and shining into the window and seeing a UFO on the outside of her house, which is, you know, and I, I, I mean, I know I've seen some stuff, you know, as far as like not, not that close in proximity, but I've seen some lights in the sky that I can't explain. Where? You know, 
I, I, we were doing a camp out a few years ago. Remember when those, uh, uh, what, what's that guy's name that does that? Carl Sagan? No, no, that does the um, Tesla. What's this, the guy that owns Tesla? And he's got. Oh, the- um, God, now you just made me draw a blank. Uh, Elon. Elon. Elon Musk, you know, and yeah. he has those satellites that can beam uh, yeah. service down to people or whatever. When those yeah. first came out. <laughs> And I didn't, I had no idea. And I, I know a lot of people have captured pictures of them, but they were like a bright centipede going through the sky. I go, oh my God, we're getting invaded. You know, like, what, like every, <laughs> what is bad, that? Every bad movie you've ever seen. This yeah, here we go. Movie. And I'm at the Hinsdale house. Might you as know, well just start hanging chains house from the garage, right? I, I got to ask you too, because we come across this so many times doing what we do through the years. We do a lot of public events and, and ghost hunts and, um, the question we get asked all the time, and we don't even own these buildings or, you know, um, people always ask us, can something follow me home? Have you, uh, have you ever, and now you mentioned the exorcism, have you ever had people in all these years reach out to you and say, Dan, I think something followed me home from Hinsdale. Yeah. And if you did, what did you do about it? Well, I mean, the first, uh, I mean, the first occurrence of that happening was on paranormal lockdown with Nick. Okay. I don't know if anybody oh, I remember. And I remember. then he went home and he had to have be cleansed at his house. And it was so weird because I was using my geo box and I was doing a tour at the house. The, and it was we were getting these really clear, cool EVPs and stuff like that. And all of a sudden through the, the geo, it started saying, where's Nick? Where's Nick? And this dark, deep voice? And I, I videotaped it and I, I sent him a quick message. I said, listen to this. I think that something is asking for you. And he's like, I got to call you. And he told me, he goes, I just did a cleansing at my house because I felt like something followed me home. <laughs> just oh did God. it. So like he was he was actually videoing himself doing the cleansing at his house the time that I was doing this tour. And then all of a sudden it's like it just got bolted back to the house or something like it was pushed back to the location. There's been a couple of people that have said something has followed them home, um, you know, but it's, you know, you just try to explain to them what they're what the best way is to like try to. Uh, maneuver some of that stuff or w- what they can do to protect themselves, you know, in my opinion. Yeah, but a lot of it's all what their belief system is based on, you right. know? Yeah. Right. So, what? See, see, my theory is that eventually, whatever it is or who they are, I think eventually they will go back to where they were originally. That's just my theory. Yeah. But, but you're right. I mean, belief system, how you protect yourselves, I mean, that all factors into it. But that, if I owned your place, I, and and all of these shows have done YouTube's and TV shows and everything, and and again they they all focus on more of the darker stuff, of course, because it's better, you know, TV and sure. sensationalism. But do you again? It's been years since I've been in there. Do you have a waiver or something or something oh, yeah. to tell people before you go in there that says, "Hey, it, the spectrum has gone from friendly." interaction to talking to past people that lived here to people getting scratched and possessed yeah yeah people have to sign that waiver before they uh, leave before they can be left the keys uh to the location so yeah i mean i i we explain to people you know stay grounded you know you i i actually try to vet people out before they even come oh yeah i was just yeah, gonna so say that because it, we've known some really people that are out there on the fringe and have other issues and not related to paranormal like, things. Yeah. I mean, no booking is getting approved without me seeing it or talking, you know, yeah. somebody to talk to, you know, so we have all different for all different levels and of, you know, we, we even have kids. Yeah. I take a lot of slack for allowing teenagers to come there. Wow. Um, uh, we have, we have three schools that have t- paranormal clubs now at high school, which is pretty cool. Yeah. And we'll actually go in and talk to the kids about the right ways of approaching things, not breaking into locations. And uh, they have to earn to be able to come to the Hinsdale house to do an investigation during the day. And then they get to present their uh, their findings to us after, which is really cool. Uh, so we, we actually had a senior project done there this year, which is kind of cool. The, the kids came and spent the night, did their senior project and made a cool. really cool video. Um, for the video production is what they were going after, but they wanted to do it on a haunted location and they were local. So, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, uh, I think that if you're teaching people the right way to do stuff, you know, and, and, and keeping them on their toes, they're the next generation, you know, I mean, but also teenagers are having experiences too, and you're giving them an oh outlet God. to explore. Yeah. That. But here's my, here's my thing. 
I, I've been in this field long enough to know that there are people that handle things a certain way. And then there's others yeah. that are wired a little differently to yeah. where everything is going to be. Something's attaching me, something's whatever, something. And we were in a location. Mm -hmm. It was a middle school. I won't say where, and I won't say when, but they invited us in because it was quote unquote haunted. And we did capture activity there. And we showed them what we captured in this really old theater. And word got out that we were there somehow, some way. One of the custodians refused to come to work because he was so worried Terrified. about whatever was yeah. in there that he had worked with for years. And yet we were in there and showed proof of it. And it freaked him out so much that he told the principal and never, I'm not coming back to work because they were in here. And yeah, he wanted know. to be transferred. So, to I mean, I, I always wonder about, again, how you deal with that sort of thing from a, a psychological I just, you know, I try to, I try to think of it with a clear mind. And, uh, you know, when somebody thinks something negative has happened, I try to give them three positive things that it could have been. Maybe okay. it's this, maybe it's that, maybe it's this, you know, it doesn't always necessarily need to need to be negative. Exactly. Could a, scratch, a scratch doesn't need to be negative. No, not at all. You know? So, I mean, it's, uh, you know, I try to counteract that with people like with positive thinking, you know, like maybe it's, Maybe it's this, this, or this, and maybe you should start thinking that way or look at these different options as, as opposed to just always thinking it's a negative because maybe you'll get a better response, you know? And, and that's why it was really, again, the way you really dove in and tried to find out as much as you could about the history, not just the dark part of it, the whole history of the town and the, the, the house and everything like that. Like I said, I've never met anyone who did what you did, bought this house and then said, here, it's a paranormal research center. Come in, mm -hmm. you know, you, you've let skeptics in there, diehard skeptics. Oh, yeah. You and I know. Oh yeah. That are, we, that we are can never name, gonna name believe Penny. anything ever, even if a spirit came over and tapped them on the shoulder and said, Hey Bob Smith, I lived here. But he's opening a door to everybody. Go, no he's way. Not limiting you know what though? Like, like I like it was it was cool. Like Kenny Kenny's office is right down the road from my office. Did I, I say Kenny Biddle? I, I didn't no, but I'll say it. Kenny Biddle. <laughs> and uh he uh I'll tell you what, the first the first time I let him come, he was he went and slept there and he said, you know, let's go out for lunch and he didn't find a ghost. Never right. he never finds a ghost. No. But he did he did bring up some things at the house that made me think, okay, you know, I need to fix this or I need to right. do this. Right. Um, th this could be doing this. This could be making that noise. There was a hole in the in the foundation of the basement. Maybe errors coming through there. You know, right, well, right. there he gave me a lot of you know bringing a skeptic in isn't necessarily a bad thing. I mean, right. he can you know it allowed me to actually patch up some things and you know to anything that you would think that could maybe debunk something. You know, like so. I mean, yeah. I mean, I, that's why I, it's open door for him or anybody anybody that's a skeptic that wants to come in there. I don't doesn't matter to me you know I, these are people are talking about their personal experiences that they have there and you know i have years and years of of them written down so but but that's what again i respect that about you because um a lot of other people in your position would be so protective of the story of you know what again project paranormal lockdown project fear all of these people come in there and stuff happens that they would never let someone like that come in who could go the other way and say no 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 you're you're a paranormal guy you've been in this field a long time you can yeah. respect that side of it and say hey have at it it's history you know? there's yeah. it's a, a lot of the stuff that i talk about is legit like it's legit history on right. the location so you can't take that away from the place whether you something happens or it doesn't happen you know, the, the history is the history, you know, and it's, 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 we're all history buffs, you know, and to be able to go back and find like a death that may have occurred there or this, that may, you know, a hanging that happened or, you yeah. know, that that's all legit and you can't take that away from the place. So you lived in a haunted house, right? Do I remember? That I did. Right? Yeah. Young? Yep. And, and go back on that one a little bit to how you got into the whole, yeah. how you got into the field. Yeah. I mean, it was uh growing up in a, in a haunted location that there was a, my paranormal nightmare on on travel channel me and my sister got to be on that oh, cool. um, yeah it was it's pretty cool it, it, we, i remember my parents were out of town and they needed a place to film and i and i said mom you know we're gonna film here and she signed the the waiver and they i remember taking a picture of the place they had all the couches moved out of her house and all the screen all the screens and everything and she's like oh my god she was like what are you doing she was like over in europe or something 
but it was, it was great. But it was, uh, yeah, it was so, great. Mom's furniture's outside. It's great. Yeah, growing growing up in, in in the house, weird things would always happen. Uh, creeps on the on the stairs, like something's walking up the stairs, and um, d- my sister's stuffed animals. She was like OCD about putting her stuffed animals on her bed, and those would get moved all the time, and I'd always get blamed for it. Um, they were actually out camping at Shirkston up in Canada, and I stayed back with my best friend that lived two hours down, and we went over to the house to get my GI Joe guys. And we had heard like singing coming from the upstairs and there's nobody, nobody at my house, you know, and uh, I wanted to leave. He ran up the stairs. He was very brave. I was not at the time. And uh, when we went upstairs and walked by my sister's room, it was, it was like a bear was sitting in the middle of the, um, of her floor and it just tipped over. Like something was just there. I was like, wow. And every time I would tell my father, and my mom about stuff, they would just kind of slough it off and try to like protect us mentally. Like, oh, it's nothing, blah, blah, blah. One time we came home from church and there was crayon drawings on our ceiling and there's yeah. crayons in the middle of the floor. You know, like, right. yeah, yeah. So like, it was, it's funny. Now they'll talk about, mom, mom talks about the shadow figure she's seen. Oh, so she life. did see stuff. Oh, yeah, just trying to protect us. them. Wow. Yeah, just trying to protect us. And my other sister experienced stuff. My other so- my other sister that wasn't even on the show, she's she talking about like, um, the one time with my dad just installed a pool in our backyard and they didn't, he didn't have electrical electric uh, to the pool yet out in the back. So we had an extension cord from our basement to, to run the filter and she got out of the pool wet and she went to go plug the uh, pool filter in and she was starting to get and she couldn't let go. She said it felt like somebody grabbed her and pulled her off. Whoa. the. So, but she didn't, she didn't even tell me that story till after the show ran, you know, like oh. after. See, you know, what's interesting about that is again, different times. If it was you right now and your kids got, you know, if, if some oh, yeah. stuff was happening, you would sit down with your kids and say, look, this is my experiences. This is, you know, but in that time, like funny you said, that you people, say that people thought my, you were nuts. They were my, like, oh, yeah, there's stuff going on in my house. I'm seeing people are like, yeah, not, not next door thinks there's stuff going on. All the these home. years, all the years that had passed, I had left, gone to college. And my mom said, you you know, we're going to move. You want to buy the place? And I thought, oh, I know the neighbors. I know the schools. I, it, yeah. Yeah. So I ended up buying the place back from my parents. And then my son, my my wife, my son, my wife said she saw a little girl standing on the stairs. My son started to experience. So I was able to, like, not do what my parents said to me, n- not make them feel crazy and explain yeah. to them, you know, about what, what it could possibly be and not to be scared. And um, he's. T- talked about talking to a little boy in his room. Um, I, I had gone to Lilydale after I bought the house and things started happening again. And this is before I even believed in psychics. You know, I was like, eh, I don't know. But my friend told me, let's go. And she she set me up for a meeting with uh, Ellen Bourne. I remember her name. And when I went into the to have my my reading done before I even sat down or even paid her, she was like, you have two children's two child spirits living in your house. Oh. And then wow. she, and then she pinpointed some stuff about my grandfather, like, like about it. You know, when he died, all he was he started in the North Tonawanda National Little League, the baseball, and just wanted one of his umping shirts and one of his hats because he taught me how to ump, play baseball. You know, it was just a fond memory I had of him, and I had one of his hats sitting next to my chair and his umping shirt up in my closet. Oh wow! And she pinpointed both of those spots, so I knew she was good. I'm like, okay, this lady is either into my business or she's picking up some stuff, you know, and um. She said they're attached to something in the location. And I said, okay. I, I couldn't, for the fathom of me, know what it was. And, and I told my dad about it. And we were we basically looked at the whole place. And and then one day I, I was on the second floor and I looked up and there was one of those little boxes in the ceiling. And I'd never been up there. Oh, <laughs> so I went and got a ladder and I popped that thing open and, and uh, crawled in there with a light. And there were some boards up against the wall. When I pulled them around, there were pictures of a little boy and a little girl. Oh my playing with God. A, playing with the dog and there's a whole series of them like five That's or six so cool paintings. yeah and then i was like i found it i this is this is it this is what they're attached to and i said go to the light you know you don't have to stay here go to the light and it felt like a uh, like just a, a lifting like the like i don't know i always say when i talk i always say it's like my first scooby-doo experience of my life you know like, <laughs> um just being able to solve the mystery you know and that's wow. what kind of that's what kind of like caught me into doing what I do now. See, everybody's got a cool story but me. Everybody. I gotta get one. I don't have I don't have any of it. Here's the thing too. Again, and I'm gonna wrap this up with more of a overall paranormal discussion. 
because you're, you're, we were talking about your kids and how you would talk to them. And, and, and I think it's healthy in a way to have a belief in the paranormal when you're young and, and understand it because if you're not from a religious background like me, um, it makes death and the talking about death at least a little more comfortable and not so scary if you're able to wrap that around the what if. Mm -hmm. You know, all of these things have happened and all these people tell all these stories, whether it's near death or paranormal experiences or it, it, that at least gives the option of or the thought of a what if, even if you don't believe in heaven or anything like that after there's some, whatever happens after when the lights go out. And that's what I wanted to ask you about. I, I don't know what your upbringing is when you were young. I don't know if you went to church Catholic. or Catholic. OK, so has any of that change since buying the house or all of your paranormal experiences like your thought of whatever the catholic beliefs are instilled in you what are your thoughts of the afterlife like the spirits that exist on that land can they go back and forth are they trapped there what is your theory on the overall how I mean, does it work I, my i mean i still have a i still i don't know like part of me uh I in college I started studying different religious backgrounds. I've spent a month in a Buddhist temple. I've I've done things like like that to try to understand other people's belief systems. And a lot of them are this, you know, just different differentiate in different ways or called right. something different, but they they all come down to the the same thing, you know. And I, I believe there's a power in prayer. I believe there's a power in people kind of coming together. It, what whether you call it prayer or you don't, but um focusing like thought process, you know, like I think there's you know, a, a way to make things happen that we don't understand still. And I, and I do believe uh, science uh, and the scientific version of, of life after death as well. I mean, with the energy, the whole energy aspect of our bodies and what happens to the energy when we die. And I mean, I, I believe that, you know, we're, we're still there when we die just because right. of, of the, of the scientific, uh, what we know in science right now, there, there's no way that it doesn't. And all, everything that you have captured, I have captured, I mean, I don't think there's any doubts that there's something after we die, you yeah. know, like it doesn't doesn't even fathom to me. Like it's like saying there, there's life on Mars. Yeah. Hello. How you could know? there not be? How yeah, could there not exactly. be? So it's, you know, with with everything that I've learned and studied, the compassion that I have for everybody's belief systems, you know, I just believe like a, a, a collective consciousness, amazing things can happen, you know, like whether you call it prayer, whether you, you know, like when you like when we post and people are all giving good vibes or you know if you have people all thinking about something positive things can happen you know and you just it, we just don't understand it all yet so and the one thing i will say about dan and and uh dan is a is a guy who doesn't get caught up in the drama if, if you're <laughs> if you're if you're in the field it, it exists it's that. here it's it's whatever but dan is a guy i've seen it time after time where if there's drama being out there by people that he knows or that he's friends with on social media, he'll say, instead of complaining about it or calling out this one or that one, just focus on yourself and being positive and, and doing, you know, and good by you and, and the people, you know, around you. And, and he does it uh, to your credit. I see it. I wish I could be that way, but, <laughs> but, here's, but here's the kicker. And that's kind of a nice little thing that, that I wanted to say is that, we all know we can't bury our heads. There's a lot of drama that's going out there and it's not in a really good way that's out there. How would you suggest, like you, you use the Hinsdale house for people to come in and learn and to study and do experiments. What would you say to the people out there now? Because a lot of people do look up to you and, and they look at you as a guide to look to for positive messages. What would you say to all the people with all this drama going on? What would be your advice to them? To not engage. Um, if, if there's negativity coming from one end, um, not engaged to that. And because then you're putting yourself down to their level. I don't care who it is. You know, I've seen, I've seen somebody from one end that I thought was a friend. And then I saw another friend come, they're coming at each other. And it's like, why are you engaging over something so minuscule? You know, like it, it, let this person sit in there and wallow in their negativity. All the people that are negative are going to rally around them. All the people that are positive are going to rally around you. Who's going to look like the jerk at the end? The one, you know, because if you engage, you're just as guilty as the other person. So don't engage and, and take that energy that you were going to focus on that. So I told the, 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 
what's the Enfield Demon House or whatever. I saw a post about like uh, that was up yesterday, and I just wrote in there. I'm like, you know, engaging makes you just as guilty as the person that you're complaining about. I go fo just focus on you know your reputation and and doing good and and don't you know you're you're just bringing light to all the negativity and, right. and where you could be bringing light to the positive stuff that's happening, and uh, let that be your focus. You know, I mean, just focus on doing good stuff. Set your goals. Look at your goals every day and say, I need to accomplish this, this, and this. You're not even going to worry about what's going on when you have stuff that you that you have goals that you want to accomplish. Uh, you know, if the goal is to is to complain and bitch about people, then sit online all day and do that. But if, if you want to accomplish some crap in this field, you know, focus on your goals and do it, you know? And I, I think people need to hear that from you because that's why you've made. Well, he's walking successful. living proof of yeah. that. Exactly. Yeah. That's why he still is what it is that. today because yeah. of that exact advice and that thought process and what you, you, you don't just say it, you live it. I'm going to rewatch this Dan, and, and listen to what you said again and try to, Try to Very good. That, so. <laughs> I mean, like, I'll, I'll, there's been a lot of, you know, a lot of people that I, I consider friends, and I see them getting engaged, and I'll, and I don't want to get engaged, but I'll, I'll talk to them on the side. I'll be like, call me right now, right. and I'll, and I'll just put them in their place. You know, I'm like, right. what are you doing? Chris Sanders is a great example of that. He's my God. You know, he got, he from, got caught up in the in the way he, he was, and and yeah. and uh, look at him now. You know, he's yeah. doing, he's he's enjoying what he does and in, in life, and you know. Doing, you know, having fun with what he's doing. So, right. And that's the way it should you, be. You have to be able to differentiate what, you know, one person's goal is to the next and not get so bent out of shape about stuff. So, everything about the Hinsdale House, Dan, how do people find all that they can about you and about the Hinsdale House and, and all that good stuff? So, I made it pretty simple. Just uh, if you go to my name, Daniel Class, right on the screen right there, dot com. I know Michelle Timmons, uh, my, one yeah. of my. Good friends of say uh put it in the chat there yeah she put Thank it a few times know. in there she came to the house from california one time there's, she's uh she's been a supporter ever since for years but yes yeah, uh, danielclass.com you'll have a link to my store you'll have a link to uh, uh another location that i support wildwood sanitarium um and everything that you would uh for, for booking will be on there everything's done online now it's so much nicer uh that way i can get everybody's information and use it for marketing yeah. Well, Dan, Dan is going to be at the expo in yes. November back Thank again. God. Thank finally. God. Wildwood is also going to be there. Oh, good. Year, so good. it'll be cool to meet them as well. I've never met them. But one thing I just want to, before we wrap up here, I just remember something else that we talked about. The first time I met you, you were telling me that there was like people that would come from like the UK and California and they would visit the house once and they would become not obsessed but they would want to come back and they kept journals and notes and investigate over. Is that sort of thing still? Oh yeah. Happen? Yeah. I, I mean, wow. we, we have people that come from all, you know, because of the, uh, the television shows, I've had people from Australia. I've had repeat people from UK now. And I, wow. and I actually, um, I get to go over in September to festival of the unexplained. Right. Again, so Colette keeps saying, how long are you going to be there? She's dying yeah. for you to get over there. Yeah, it, she hopefully she'll, she's coming over this this year. Hopefully she'll be able to come to the house. She said she can't. Oh uh, well, it'll happen. It'll happen. Wow. But I'll be over there in September for a week uh, in the UK to Nuneaton and some other places. But yeah, I mean it's they they come from all over the place. And uh, oh, I, I want to mention one other cool thing that we've done, sure. done at the location that so um, you know the little the, the scannable barcodes. Yeah, that people use for like business cards. So, so we have a, 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 a URL tour of the house now. So, oh, cool. Uh, so you know how like the the you talked about like trying to get the information out. How do you get the information out to people? The truth. So in inside the house, we have twelve stations on um, on the outside of the house and the inside of the house. Twelve stations, and every station is going to be like a story of what happened in this room. Um, cool uh, investigators that have been there that may have captured a really good piece of evidence. Uh, we have interviews from Clara Dandy. We have interviews from the priest that performed wow. exorcism. So it's it's really cool interactive wow. uh, thing that we can update on 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 the fly. If like some something new happens, we have to update the history. It can all be updated on the fly. And then we're we're putting a, a, a Wi-Fi extender outside this summer, and we're going to actually expand it to the outside as well. So there'll be twelve stations on the outside of the house. So up to date information twenty four seven at the Hinsdale House. You, uh, to your credit, again, Innovative. before we go, um, forward thinking, innovation, the cameras in the house, 
you know, running so people could look in yeah. uh, what everything that you're talking about. I, I love that because, again, you never just say this is what it is and come see it or whatever. Do you know how much that helps not for the yeah, misinformation yeah, that happens great what you when do. you're in a really room? So so everybody starts selling stories and they get intermingled, yeah. but no, it's right there. Yeah, it's great. Those cameras that we have in the house now too, the teams that come in, instead of having to set up a DVR system, can just retrieve the footage from the five cameras during their investigation wow. that we have set up. And that's just recording as they come in now. And this is what happens when a paranormal investigator owns a right <laughs> paranormal location you get every dream thing that you would have wanted if you said who, I, if i own this place there it is who would so have, somebody you know, asked do you have a journal there for when teams visit to write yeah. in yeah i have i have years and years of journals and we're actually um going through them all right now and and putting them into book form so we have all the way for 10 years worth of journals and wow. entries of of teams that have been there and things that have happened we'll be able to like pinpoint the hot spots and the, and the names and all the cool stuff that happened there and hopefully uh it'll, it'll be a really cool book for people to to check out and a reference guide as well yeah you can absolutely. go in there with all that information you well, can I leave. build upon yeah i leave it there for the, probably the past four years worth of journal yeah. entries for people to read when they come in if they want to wow very cool uh dan great seeing you man me and too. again, you're one of the most positive people in this field. And we need more. I, I, I enjoy watching your success and your continued success. And I can't wait to see you. Likewise. In November. Yeah, I can't wait. I hated missing last year. It sucked. We hated my it. Favorite, you weren't there. My favorite plate, my favorite event. You know, one we of were like, Dan's events. over there. He's not coming here. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but we'll have you back. It'll be yeah. good to see you. All right, it'll Dan. Be, take it good. easy. Have a good Thanks, night. Thanks, guys. That's it. Dan, we've known Dan for a while now, and Dan really is a good guy. He's yeah. one of the, I, I wish there were more people like him in the field because good guy. And what he's done for that building, when we first went in there, it was freezing cold. There was only electricity in that one room. We set everything up in the dark with our flashlights on the second floor in the basement. And now you look at pictures of that room. Stranger knocking and, at the door in the wee hours of the oh, morning. Oh, that's a whole different story for <laughs> another day. But, um, that's it, guys. We'll be back. Um, what's today? Today is what? Thursday. 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 I'm working on tomorrow. We're investigating with the Girl Scouts at the Haunted College, Centenary University. Uh, Saturday, maybe or Sunday, I'll have the footage done from the mine that we just investigated, and the EVPs are crazy. We, me, Tanya, Chris. Uh, we're investigating. We do live investigations. We do interviews. We just do discussions here. So uh, we should have the we should have the footage. We'll do a review. We'll watch the footage. We'll comment on what happened. So we'll probably do that Saturday or Sunday. But thanks for watching, guys. We'll have see you a good soon. night. Stay safe. Stay healthy. Please, please, it's very important. Remember to be kind. Good night, everybody.